you're Bill Bailey. Hello there. My name is Alec Jones. It's all gone wrong for me. I often do that at parties. People say, so what do you do then? Oh, Alec Jones. <laughs> and you can hear them as they go away going, oh, the hell, he's let himself go, ain't he? And just to complete the effect, I shout after him, no, look, I still got it. I walk in through the air. <laughs> I actually feel a bit sorry for the Welsh, because uh, when they were offered devolution, they weren't that bothered, were they? They just sort of went, oh, well, all right then, yeah, I suppose, you know. Uh, not doing anything, yeah, that'd be great, yeah. You know, the right to self-government. All right then, well, you know, as long as the darts isn't on, I'll watch it, you know. That's great, brilliant, thanks for that. No, the Scots, now, they were a bit different. Oh, yes. No, they wanted devolution. Oh, yes, yes, they said. Or so we were led to believe. I don't actually think so. I think there was a large number of don't knows, particularly the Scottish nationalists, sitting in a little shack somewhere. Right. What do we want? Hey, what do you? Uh, what do you uh, devolution. Uh, what the? Uh, there's local taxes. Uh, what do you? I tell you what, uh, what is that, we all? Basically, what we're trying to say is here. Hey, uh, my <laughs> We're all agreed on that. Okay. <laughs> Motion carried. <laughs> but at least the Scots have got a proper parliament. Poor old Welsh. All they've got is assembly. The entire Welsh parliament has to sit cross-legged on a floor of gin. <laughs> Every morning, some bloke from Plaid Company gets up. Right, good morning, everyone. This morning we'll be looking at financial restructuring in the Ronda, but uh, before that we've got a nice policeman here who's going to give you a little talk on road safety. <laughs> hey, get in there, mate. Didn't think you were going to stop there, you miserable pike of ice bastard. Christ, in the UK is pretty bloody grim. I had to kill a pine martin this morning with my bare hands. Ripped its spine out, cut my pounds of butter up its guts. Beautiful. <laughs> Where'd you kick your jazz mags in, mate? You ever seen the Duke of Knockers? It's like a porn version of Braveheart. Ooh, tits, a lot of woad flying around. Beautiful. <laughs> Why are we stopping, mate? What's that? You don't need to use it, Polly Barton. Scotland has a new parliament, maybe it's a chance to rediscover your national identity, you know. Maybe the Scottish need some kind of symbol of their new found nationalism. Maybe an indigenous creature, like the Pine Martin, eh? Now, have you ever seen a pine mine? No. No? Ah, but it's a very beautiful creature. It's like a long red stoat, like that. Uh, like a worm in a furry sleeping bag. That's what it's like. <laughs> like a tiny little Japanese bonsai whale, uh, but without the sea-dwelling element. More the land-dwelling. Uh, like a mouse that's drunk a magic potion, grown all big, got embarrassed, gone red, and the wind's changed, it stayed like it. <laughs> I did it through an ab in the paper like, you know, one of them home exchanges where you swap your home with some bloke in another country and have a holiday in it, you know. I thought, Colombia? That'd be fantastic, man. All that cocaine, yeah. rugby looking birds and all monkeys and that. I'm a little bit disappointed, really, you know. I mean, this is meant to be the British part of Colombia. I thought that'd be like Colombia, only you'd have proper beer and sky in the pubs, like. <laughs> I've been here three months. All I've seen is an elk. <laughs> Big donkey with our antlers. <laughs> I'll give it another week, see if it picks up. 
mind you, I'm thinking about the bloke back in my flat in Gated. <laughs> Watching my videos, sleeping in my bed. Makes me feel a little bit dirty, you know. <laughs> so, I was in a pub the other day, and uh, this bloke came up to me, right? And he said, uh, excuse me, mate, would you like to buy a cordless iron? <laughs> and so immediately, I said, uh, what? <laughs> and he said, um, the Yamaha PBX 500 represents a major breakthrough in mobile laundry appliance. It allows you to do your ironing when you want, how you want, and more importantly, where you want. With a 10-digit memory, a paging facility, and a range of up to 10 miles, clearly this is the iron for the way we live today. <laughs> I said, uh, you're just reading that off a card, aren't you? And he said, well, yeah, I am actually, yeah. I said, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear your sales pitch. I want to hear what you think about it. I want to hear it from your heart. I want to hear the Sturm und Drang. <laughs> and he said, Sturm und Drang? What the hell's that? And I said, oh, it's a play by Stephen Burkhoff. You probably wouldn't have heard of it. And he said, don't patronise me, you long haired git. I might have done. He's that skinhead geezer, swears a lot. And I said, you cannot dismiss Burkhoff simply in those terms. <laughs> and held my head back for effect like that. <laughs> I said, Burkhoff is the quintessential zeitgeist. He is the eponymous woodlouse, nibbling his way through the bread of mainstream theatre. And he said, you're just reading that off a book of Burkhoff. Like that. I said, well, yeah, I am, a yeah. You're quite right. He is a skinhead geezer, swears a lot. You're quite right. And we bonded, you know, not full-on bonding, just a little bit of finger bonding. Right there. And before you could say homoerotic subtext, a feminist jumped up out of nowhere. She just appeared in a cloud of smoke. Jumped up out of a manhole, actually. She didn't like that at all. Oh, no. Because that totally undermined her whole agenda. And she den denounced him as a grubby little sexist salesworm, which is lucky for me because she doesn't actually exist. She's merely a narrative device in order to get me on the next bit. <laughs> ah, easy now, easy. OK, here we go then. Uh, this next joke is set in the present day. Three women go into a pub. Yeah. All right. First woman goes up to the bar and says, Hooray! We've colonised the male-dominated joke format. <laughs> <laughs> and the second woman said, Oh, look at the arse on that. Get the pints in. Because she was a 90s woman, sexually aggressive, highly politicised and motivated. And the third woman said, Oh, I'll have a Campari and soda. Look at my big tits. Like that. <laughs> And the first woman said, nah, we shall never escape the fact that it's a bloke telling this joke. <laughs> class division? Yeah, I'd say so. This country, you're either first class or second class. The railway used to be a symbol of great proletarian pride. Engineering by the masses, for the masses, to the masses. But now it's been dismantled, piece by piece, till it's nothing more than a bourgeois plaything, a private service for the middle class and their offspring. Makes me sick. All aboard! <laughs> Next up, Gibby Big Junction. <laughs> I'd like to pay tribute now to another BB, great hero of mine, Mr. Billy Bragg. Thank you. I used to buy my chips from an oppressive chip shop regime. The girl who worked there, she seemed happy, but I knew it was not what it seemed. Do you want salt and vinegar? Was what they made her say. But in the language of the ghetto, that means help, I'm a woman in chains. I wanted to free her. I wanted to see her running naked through the woods round Rainham. And if I had some tigers, I'd train them. <laughs> to protect her from the sexual fascism that was lurking round the gherkins. We 
We'd lean across the counter, we would talk I carved the name Debbie on a little wooden fork But into the shop came a skinhead gang They snatched the fork from my hand And using three more forks and a saveloy They fashioned a dog-shaped sausage toy Dancing across the counter And uh, yeah, and uh, we had a lot of uh, work on a while back, uh, putting all clad in on the uh, Berlin Wall. <laughs> yeah, but we had a bit of bad luck with that. Yeah, that's a communism. Yeah. That's right. Well, uh, we were just getting the angle grinder out of the van, the bloody thing's come down round my ears. <laughs> you were there, weren't you? Yeah. You know, obviously for them, they feel totally vindicated that they no longer languish under a totalitarian regime. But yeah. for us, you know... Well, we lost out. We lost out, yeah. yeah. We were going to rip out the whole of the Iron Curtain. Yeah, we're, gonna, uh, we're putting an iron blind. Yeah, technically, thing, you know, yeah. iron helmet, iron balance. balance. That way, if the shadow of the bear were to ever once again cast its evil shadow across the southern uplands of Eastern Europe, we could just, you know... <laughs> Whip it up. Whip it up. <laughs> just whip it up. I have been doing up the flat. I've gone for the postmodern, high-tech, urban bloke coming back from the pub look. So it's largely padding, you know, <laughs> around the door area. No key as such. Just a sort of voice-activated entry system responds to an argument with a taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> what it's all about? Twelve pounds, ten pounds, and <laughs> well, I hit the deck, but luckily I've had my hands and knees scanned by computer, and it triggers receptors in the floor, turns all the lights on, a little voice says, You're in, you're all right. <laughs> But then there's lots of low-level handles to pull myself along, pull myself along, on a little rail, and I get there to the big flood-lit urinal in the hall there, padded headboard there like that. Little handle there, in case I wake up and fall back. Uh, oh, uh. Little shelf there, a few nibbles on it. Mm, brilliant. Uh, mm -mm. And just there, I've got a mirror, except it's not a mirror. It's a photograph of me when I was 19. I look at it and I go, yeah, still looking good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I got the toolbox out, and I was polishing my toolbox, huh? and, uh, yeah, easy, uh, and the genie came out, huh? and he said, uh, I am the genie of the toolbox, and I can grant you three wishes, provided they are of building supply nature. <laughs> I said, oh, all right, uh, can I have some grout? And he said, what do you want, plain or acrylic weave? I said, uh, I don't know. He said, what tiles you got? I said, Chinese slate. He said, you want acrylic weave? You have plain, you get tile slippage, all your grout will come up. You have to have temporary pontoon flooring. That's a big job, it'll cost you. I said, uh, yeah, all right. Uh, I said, he said, what about sealant? I said, oh, I don't know. He said, got to have sealant. Uh, what's your coverage? I said, 4.5 metres. He said, half gal tub will do it. I went, oh, right. He goes, what, metal gloss? I said, I don't know. He said, well, I have matte then. He said, oh no, matte, you know, that's, uh, that's not, doesn't shine up. I said, all right, gloss. He said, not very hard wearing. I said, all right, what shall I have? And he said, well, there's a new product which combines the durability of matte with the fine finish of gloss. I said, what's that? He said, moss. I said, <laughs> what? What, moss, actual moss? And he goes, no, builder's moss, trade name, innit? Hey, <laughs> Gary, he thought it was moss. <laughs> and then he said, I've got people waiting. He put me on genie hold, and I hate that. <laughs> So, you're interested in home security, Isa? There has been an increase in burglaries in the area, yes. Naturally. Every day, the tide of thieving scum washes a little higher on your delightful <laughs> suburban shores. What did you have in mind? An alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Might keep the cats out. <laughs> These days, most burglars are trained by ex-KGB assassins. And as such, are able to compromise most conventional sonic devices using a spoon. 
<laughs> I recommend a total overhaul of the defence systems of your dwelling. We call it the Ring of Steel. <laughs> this is your dwelling, sir. I've done my own work. These are the three main kill zones, or secure areas. If anything so much as coughs in this area, then the Sentinel 4000 Scumbuster becomes armed. It is so sensitive, it can pick up testicular sway in a male interloper. Or very, very slight breast jiggle if the perpetrator is female, although this is unlikely. Then, using technology pioneered by East German Riot Police, it emits a low-level subsonic impulse, which causes the intruder's bowels to evacuate. If thus humiliated, he will try and find egress from the domicile through Zone A, sorry, the hall. But then he'll be confronted by a series of disturbing images montaged on the airlock, uh, the door. War, <laughs> famine, torture, a tortoise lying on its back, its legs wriggling helplessly as it bakes in the desert sun. <laughs> his will now broken, he will fall to the ground, triggering the anti-personnel weevils to swarm over his legs and suck the cartilage out of his knees, rendering him immobile. He is now ready for the holding pen. This bedroom will have to go. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I don't want any of this. Maybe I'll just get a dog. <laughs> With respect, sir, a dog is for a lady. <laughs> if you want an organic deterrent, have you thought about a panther? Very unforgiving beast. Look at it. Don't <laughs> 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 oh, worry, sir, it's just a droid. But shall we have a look at him in action? Look at him go. Look at him. his head off. Just leave the light on. Found this one creeping around upstairs. That's my wife! <laughs> she did not identify herself. All personnel must identify themselves at all times. <laughs> You're making a big mistake. <laughs> you, sir, are sitting on a death trap. It cannot be killed. <laughs> it's a jungle out here! <laughs> Is a very powerful instrument, the organ. Oh, yes. And TV themes use it to try and create an aura of importance. Dominant, thrusting. We have issues, like world in action. It's like, listen to us. We have issues. <laughs> but if you actually analyse it, it's just one chord with a scale going down. He wrote it in five minutes on the way to the studio. Probably thought I'd get away with it. It's just this. <laughs> now, uh, as a musician, sometimes you get asked to do a bit of session work, and the toughest of all of these jobs has got to be the session xylophone player, really, you know, because uh, there's not really a great deal of work going around. Flight number AB730 to Tangiers is now departing through gate number six. <laughs> There, there are some much better jobs going. I mean, whoever got the Take Heart Gallery music, oh, that was a plum job, wasn't it? <laughs> Mind you, the bloke probably getting bored off with him. He was showing off in the outtakes. Keep it simple, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> the other end of the scale, though, has got to be playing the inserts on linguaphone records. That's a tough job, isn't it? <laughs> Écoutez et répétez. <laughs> <laughs> is a great area of employment for the session xylophone player animating kids TV shows, right? So what you have to do, get the video back to the house, 
<clears throat> and then sit there and animate the action. <laughs> right. <laughs> what have we got here? <laughs> Little mouse going up a hill. Right. <laughs> yeah, that'll do, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's twitching his nose. <laughs> he's looking to the right. <laughs> looking to the left. <laughs> oh, he's had an idea. <laughs> What's he doing now? Oh, there's a surprise. Back down the hill. Yeah, and he's starting to get a bit bored with it now. He's starting to get drifting off. He's where? He's where is he going now? He's walking into an off license. No. What's he doing? He's walking into a walking into a porn cinema. <laughs> Oh, where am I? <laughs> oh, I wonder where Mary the Worm is. <laughs> oh, uh, hello, Mary. How are you today? Let's go and find Cyril the Duck. Go on. <laughs> hello? Yes, and if this is Asda's publicity department, I can tell you now, if you're not happy with the tapes, you can stick them up your arse. You people know nothing about music. Relax, man. It's your old buddy, Lester. Lester? Yeah, man. Lester Coltrane. What? The Lester Coltrane? Yeah. I don't believe it. What are you phoning me for? I always admired your work, Lionel. And when I arrived at the airport, something reminded me of you. And I thought, hey man, we've never worked together. Well, I was at the airport, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Me and my band are playing tonight. Yeah, I know, I've got tickets, I can't wait. I need you, man. Cootie is sick. Well, I mean, I've got some Vicks in the cupboard, but all the chemists are shut. <laughs> no, man, I need you to play. I need that magic. I need your silky vibes. You are the man. You're the Velvet Spider. <laughs> velvet Spider. No one's called me that in a long time. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> you did it, Lionel, you did it. We're all so proud of you, especially Mary. Oh, shut up. <laughs> A lot of people say to me, Bill, what is your favourite kind of music? And I'd have to say compilation albums, because they represent superior value for money. <laughs> but my favourite one of these would have to be the greatest Cockney rock album in the world ever. <laughs> Two, three, four. With the grass is green, the the you take me down the old Kent Road. I'm so excited. I'm about to lose control, I think I like it. things he's done and how he stitched me up. And I thought, never mind, I'll let you off. And I'm going to tell you why. We are family. We're family, all right. I got all my family with me. We're having a right laugh. Hey, put your own bread in. Ha ha ha. Let's go have another cup of tea. Oh, the bats have left the bell tower. The virgins have been bled. Cos Bella, look, oh, she's dead. He had a girl. Ha <laughs> ha! 